time. Is that clear? Yes, please. Yes, right, so now let's look at this one. I will recap on the part that the four stages take place. First of all, this is the cell. So, dalam cell ini kita ada mitochondria organelle. So, first, ini mitochondria. And when we talk about aerobic respiration, there are the four stages. What is the first stage? Glycolysis. Glycolysis. And where does it occur? Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. Good job. So now it means that first, dia akan berlaku dekat luar mitochondria dulu. You must remember the location and the name of the stage. First, glycolysis berlaku dekat sini, in the cytoplasm. And then after that, the second stage is the link reaction. Good job. So the link reaction. And now link reaction berlaku dekat dalam mitochondria. So it means that after glycolysis, the, ter the second, third and fourth stages semua akan berlaku dalam mitochondria. And that's in the mitochondria matrix untuk link reaction as well as the third stage Krebs. ialah Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle, okay? So, dua ini dia akan berlaku dalam mitochondria matrix. So, satu dekat sini, dua dan tiga dalam matrix. And then after that, the last stage is? Oxidative phosphorylation. Very good. So, oxidative phosphorylation as the last stage of aerobic respiration, dia berlaku dekat inner mitochondrial membrane or we say the criste. So these four parts you must remember. So ini dekat criste, kalau tak nak, you boleh tulis inner mitochondrial membrane. Mesti mention mitochondrial matrix pun mitochondrial matrix. And this three, okay, sorry, this two kita akan belajar next week. We'll look at glycolysis and link reaction today. And glycolysis berlaku dekat cytoplasm. So now, from the name itself, glyco is like glycogen, glycosidic bond. Anything that is glyco is related to carbohydrate or sugar. So glyco, it means sugar. Lysis, it means breakdown. So... Glycolysis is simply the conversion of the glucose, like the breakdown, the splitting of the glucose, the sugar, into two pyruvate. Satu glucose yang six carbon at the end of glycolysis akan jadi dua pyruvate, three carbon. So that's what glycolysis is all about. <clears throat> Macam mana kita nak split break down one glucose into two pyruvate, which is three carbon. And during glycolysis, there are other production of ATP. Like I mentioned just now, this is the first stage of cellular respiration and it occurs in the cytoplasm. And now glycolysis, it has 10 steps. So 10 steps, Setiap steps itu ada enzyme yang terlibat. Tapi enzyme yang you kena hafal hanya dua je. Two enzymes yang you perlu ingat dia punya nama. Ini je yang penting. Nanti Miss bagi lah mana dua enzymes ini yang you mesti ingat nama dia. And the way to remembering them. And glycolysis, 10 steps, we will split them into two parts or two phases. The first one is what we call the energy investment phase. 
when you invest something it means you will give something okay you give something and you pay something that's invest if you pay it that means dia akan use up you buy ya so dia dah guna duit guna duit so use up so investment is the one that will use up the energy that means tambah ke tolak ATP tolak tolak okay so sini you akan tolak ATP sebab when you invest something you dah bayar bayar tu you dah guna guna energy but then energy pay off they give you back okay so when the energy pay you back so pay off so that will produce the ATP plus ATP invest your labo okay you buy dulu that's why you use up the energy first you keluarkan benda tu dulu tapi energy pay off means you dapat balik the energy pay it back to you that's the meaning of pay off phase so ini untuk produce energy so first you have to use it first and then lepas tu baru dia boleh produce the energy mesti ingat dua phases ini sangat penting is that okay okay miss, okay, miss. all right okay, miss. so Dan you mesti ingat selain daripada dua phases ini, the name of these two phases and the next thing, you must remember the name of all these intermediates. Sepuluh nama ini semua kena hafal. And if you understand the name, it's easy to you to remember the steps involved. Apa yang penting dalam glycolysis selain daripada nama dua fasa tadi, you must remember this 10 intermediates. And once you remember all of them, you can easily tell at what step, what is the enzyme, what is the name of the step. This is the first thing you must learn. Memorize and remember the names of the intermediates. Itulah kenapa Miss bagi you mnemonics ini. Ayat ini untuk tolong you ingat susunan untuk setiap intermediates as well as to let you analyze apa perkataan yang boleh derive from this word. The name. Okay? So if it's just remembering the sentence, it may be hard for you. I give you this picture in order to let you know a story. Once you know the story, you can easily remember the name. And then you can easily relate this to the intermediates. Dah catat kan yang Miss Suroyo catat ini? Sudah? Sudah, Miss. Alright. So now I will teach you how to use it. Alright? So first, Remember the sentence. Gillian, this lady here, gives fresh frosty drink yang dekat tangan dia. So you boleh nampak semua pun ikut alphabetical order. F dulu, G and then baru O. So the arrangement of these three food, they are in alphabetical order. So you tak payah ingat, eh, green tea pie dulu ke orange truffle? Ingat F and then G baru O. So fresh frosty drink, like frost, ice frost, green tea pie, mesti sekali lah, green tea pie. And then orange topping truffle is like a kind of chocolate. So these three foods together, bagi siapa? To peppy papai. Peppy means very energetic. Okay, Popeye dekat sini boleh nampak lah dia memang muscular, so very energetic. I guess some of you should know, uh, tau lah kot Popeye, but I think that's the generation gap. This is the cartoon that I watched when I was a kid, but I don't think you watch it because it was so long ago. Popeye the Sailor Man, the Sailor Man. Kami main game nya saja. Yeah. yeah. Ada yeah, game ada game. Ada. Sempat lagi. 
I just know the song like Popeye the Sailor Man. Poo -poo, if you still remember that. But anyway, this is the sentence that you must remember. So the resentence in me, boleh you kaitkan dengan nama. Or if you have other other ways to remember the names, go ahead. But this is just my way to you, for you to remember the name. And now once you remember the name, you can start to relate them to the names of the intermediate in glycolysis. Boleh fahamkan ayat ini? Okay. Right, so now let's learn how to relate this sentence to each intermediate in the glycolysis. It's just like what I gave you yang untuk ingat um, classification, the taxonomy to dominant King Philip yang tu. So this is the same concept, how you are going to use it. First, Gillian. G L, so glucose. I think the first one dengan last one you memang akan ingat. Sebab inilah definition glycolysis. From, gly from glucose yang 6 carbon, dia jadi chiroate yang 3 carbon. So this thing, most of the time, student tak ada problem untuk ingat. Yang first dengan last one. But then they have problems remembering this name here. So I hope by using this way, it will be easy for you to relate. So Gillian, glucose, gives, so G dengan S, so glucose, 6. You boleh ingat number dia sekali. And then fresh, yang ada S, you boleh nampak yang semua ada S itu, itulah untuk number. So gives, glucose, 6. Fresh, fructose, six. And then frosty, fructose, one, six. So one, six. Bole? Bole. So far, tau eh? Bole inga eh? Right, ini memang tak ada cara nak ingat. So you will have to memorize it. As long as you know that, oh, D. Yang short form dia ialah DHAP. But then most of the students always have a hard time to remember its full name. This one, I can't help you to remember it. But that's it. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Yang last one, mesti yang 888. You boleh nampak. Semua pun sama. Okay, but then now you can see we start to have P. Once there are the P, semua, ah, bukan P dulu, nanti ya, nanti itu glycerate. So in the green tea pie, G for glycerate, T yellow 3, and then P yellow phosphate. And then orange topping, this one you can remember all the names. O for one, okay? One, three, and then dua P, maksudnya bisphosphor, other dua. Bisphosphor, and then G for glycerate. So that students selalu tak tahu, bisphosphate ke, bisphosphor glycerate. If you remember the name orange topping, one, three, and then dua P, so bis. It's the same as die. Tapi dekat sini kita tak cakap die or buy. We say bis. Bis phosphate. Sebab dua P. So phosphor and then G for glycerate. Bis phosphor glycerate. And then you boleh perasan yang lepas ni semua nama dia phosphor glycerate. Lepas ni everything is phosphor glycerate. Start there with one three bisphosphor glycerate and then three phosphor glycerate. So FF is like the sound f f. So for phosphor glycerate and two 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 phosphor glycerate. Cap P P E P P E P yella phosphor ino pyruvate. You should remember the last one is pyruvate. So the previous one is also pyruvate. 
tapi dia ialah PEP. PEP maksudnya upper pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate. So, I senangkan you ingat PEP. So, PEP, 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 phosphoenol pyruvate. And then Popeye, pi, so pyruvate. That's how you use the sentence to relate to the name of the intermediates. And let's just do it again. So you will remember the order. You don't have to remember which one comes first. If you remember the sentence, then you can easily tell which word comes first. And then the name as well as number dia letak dekat mana. So first, Jillian gives, can you complete it for me? Gives what? Fresh, Fresh. frosty drink, mm -hmm. green okay. tea pie, green tea pie, orange topping truffle. So orange topping truffles. To Peppy Popeye. That's it. Thank you. To to Peppy Popeye. And then dari sini baru you dah ingat, okay? Actually, Jillian Popeye ini I bagi je. But you can actually remember glucose and pyruvate from the starting. Ini memang tak perlu miss bagi tahu untuk ingat ke, you memang dah ingat. From what I said, that's the definition of glycolysis. So glucose and then pyruvate. Ini yang you mesti tahu dululah. So Jillian, Popeye ini you dah boleh exclude sebab you memang dah akan ingat dua ini. So now the next one. Glucose and then the next one pun masih G and then S. So masih sama glucose what is that? The number? Six. Six. Phosphate. Phosphate. Okay. Phosphate. That's it. So you boleh nampak semua yang ada S ini pun untuk number. So you don't have to remember, is it the number come first or is it after? You boleh nampak S pun untuk number O ini. Okay. Frosty. So sebelum S ini pun untuk number. So, you can remember G, kalau G, the depan ini pun glucose, and then fresh, FR, and then 6. Yang start dengan FR ialah? Fructose. Fructose, that's it. So, fructose 6, phosphate, and then the next one, masse FR. So, masse? Fructose. fructose. So, masa fructose, tapi sekarang dia ada O dengan S. So, O dengan S ini ialah 1, 6. So, kalau 1, 6, again, satu ialah phosphate. Kalau dua, kita panggil dia? Biphosphate. Good job. Bisphosphate. Okay, ada S ya. Bisphosphate. Biasanya, student memang senang nak ingatlah yang depan ini. So, you boleh nampak dari glucose or another way, if you think this may be easier, if you can remember glucose, ialah 6 carbon, then dia punya position semua 6 dulu. So, glucose, 6 carbon. So, glucose, 6 phosphate, and then fructose, 6 phosphate. Fructose, 1, 6. Kalau ada dua, sudah. So, bis phosphate. And this one, Ini memang tak dapat tolong ya, eh. kena ingat sendiri. Dihydroxy, sorry. Dihydroxy acetone phosphate. So the next one, GTP, green tea pie. So GTP, GTP then G is for glyceraldehyde. And then T yellow. Three. Three and then phosphate. 
kalau you tak tahu bila lah kita guna phosphate bila kita dah sebut glycerate then you can remember this G here G dekat belakang memang ini je yang ada G dekat belakang then you can remember that's where it starts kita guna glycerate so one three so orange topping one three and then ada dua P so phosphate ke bice 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 phosphate and then ada G sudah so glycerate so you should remember oh that's where it starts to have glycerate dekat belakang sebab yang depan ni semua tak ada G sampai sini je dia ada G dekat belakang so that's where you start glycerate so one three bis phosphor glycerate sebab you ingat oh ada dua P ada dua P ini bis phosphor glycerate and then barulah dia jadi three FF so it like fur fur so phosphor glycerate from the sound fur so phosphor glycerate and then two jadi nombor two two phosphor glycerate and like I told you just now PEP pep P so PEP you can see the last one is pi dekat sini nampak pi sudah mestilah the last part dia pun start dengan pi root kalau you tak tahu eh bila lah saya guna g uh, sampai sini you boleh nampak oh pi sudah so inilah pi root so pep that will be phosphor enol pi root can you do that yes miss okay right so now um Let's learn how to remember the step. Okay, glucose, jadi glucose 6 phosphate, and then fructose 6 phosphate, and then fructose 1 6 bis phosphate. Right, you boleh nampak, whenever we have the word bis, you boleh nampak, dia tambah phosphate do dekat number 1. From 6, jadi 1 6. From three, jadi one three. So whenever they want to add the extra phosphate group, they add it at position one. Ini memang senang lah. Kalau you tak dah lupa dekat number ini, you pun boleh terus ingat. Oh, yang depan ni masih six, and then dia tambah tu at one. So one six bis phosphor. When it's three, become one three. Ini lah pun tambah dekat position one. That's the first thing you need to know. The second thing now, glucose jadi glucose 6 phosphate. Apa beza dua ini? Glucose 6 phosphate ada apa? Glucose tak ada. Very good. Phosphate. phosphate. Very good. So now you can see that from glucose becomes glucose 6 phosphate, dia dah tambah phosphate group. And we say that from step one to step five. Step one to step five, yela first phase. What is the name of the first phase? Investment. Investor pay off. Energy investment phase. Good job. Energy investment phase. So, kita guna ke, we use or we produce ATP. Yes. Yes. Okay, so Sini Yang uses ATP. That's how I ask my student to do. Very every time they have the flow chart, we will do like this. So uses ATP. Now over here from glucose, jadi glucose six phosphate. Maksudnya dia dah tambah ADP, ATP. The glucose gain a uh, the glucose gain phosphate group. So they are gain phosphate group. So what do you think? This phosphate group come from where? ATP. ATP. That's it. So ATP, they bagi glucose phosphate group there. 
And then dia sendiri dah jadi ATP. So phosphate group ini tambah dekat glucose. That's why dia dah jadi glucose 6 phosphate. Boleh faham? Okay. So that's why I say from the name itself, you can tell what step involved. Sebab dekat sini you terus nampak, oh dia ada tambah phosphate group. Sebab dia from glucose jadi glucose 6 phosphate. That's why dia dah tambah phosphate group and you know this is energy investment phase. It means they use ATP. Kalau dia guna ATP, inilah yang tempat dia akan guna ATP untuk bagi phosphate group dekat glucose to become glucose 6 phosphate. I taught you the other day, kalau dia gain phosphate group, what is the name of the process? Phosphorylation. Very good. Phosphorylation. Sekarang, phosphorylation of glucose ke phosphorylation of glucose 6-phosphate? Which one? Siapa yang gain glucose? Glucose. Siapa yang gain glucose, sorry. Siapa yang gain phosphate group, so glucose ah. So glucose, dia gain phosphate group. That's why we say phosphorylation of glucose. So glucose yang gain phosphate group, jadi glucose 6 phosphate. Can you understand? Mesti yeah. ingat ya. Phosphorylation. Phosphorylation means gain phosphate group. So now we say glucose gain phosphate group. So phosphorylation of glucose and then it becomes glucose 6-phosphate. Right. From glucose 6 to fructose 6, ada tak dia involve gaining anything? Ada tak? Dapat phosphate group lebih ke atau apa? Tiada. Tiada kan? Tapi from glucose jadi fructose. So, this is what we call isomerization. Sebab glucose dengan fructose dekat sini dia susun. Dia rearrange the molecule, the atoms and then now it became an isomer. So, isomerization dekat step ini. Tak ada apa-apa lah. Dia rearrange je from glucose, dia jadi fructose. But now, the next one. Fructose 6 become fructose 1, 6. What is difference here? Fructose 1, 6 are the lebe upper. Lebe phosphate. Use ATP. Very good. Again, from 1, 1 je phosphate dekat position 6. Now, dia dah tambah phosphate dekat position 1. So, bis phosphate dah tau dia ada lebe phosphate. And we know this is energy investment phase, so they're gonna ATP. That means the phosphate group, it comes from the ATP. ATP, bagi phosphate group, dekat fructose 6-phosphate. Itulah yang dia gain phosphate group and become fructose 1-6. So ATP pula dah jadi ADP. So far, so good. Good, me. That's the reason why I need you to remember the name first. Everything will be easy once you remember the names. Dari nama itu, terus you boleh kaitkan dengan dia punya process. See, just now, we didn't even look at anything to remember. We just based on the name. We just based on the name to know the process. And that's why in this step where it gains phosphate group, what will be the name of the step? Phosphorylation of fructose. Phosphorylation. And this time, phosphorylation of fructose 6 phosphate. Fructose 6 phosphate any gain phosphate group and becomes fructose 1 6 base phosphate. And now, dua step ini, you kena ingat enzyme dia. 
six carbon, six. So hex. You learn hexagon. Yes. So as we learned last chapter, kita cakap yang transfer phosphate group enzyme tu nama dia kinase. Tak kira apa lah. And whenever they involve the transferring of phosphate group, then the enzyme name is kinase. This one simply hexo kinase. Ingat glucose six carbon or glucose six phosphate. All right. So over here it involves six. So hex hexo kinase, which means it involves the transferring of phosphate group. Another one that you need to know is this one. Phosphorylation of fructose. So phosphor fructose kinase. That's how you remember the enzyme name. And throughout the 10 steps, dua enzyme ini je yang you kena hafal. Yang lain tu tak perlu. Tak perlu ingat pun. Dia takkan tanya. Yang dia akan tanya hanya dua enzymes ini dekat step phosphorylation. Okay. So far, boleh? Boleh. 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 Alright. And now fructose 1,6-base phosphate. Dia akan jadi dihydroxy acetone phosphate. So this one, step ini kita tak sebut apa step dia. We don't talk about it. And then now dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Yeah, sorry, I will have to show this one. Wait a minute. Mm. So if you see here from fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, they akan pecah jadi dua. That's where the splitting occur. When one glucose yang 6 carbon sampai sini, dia pun masih 6 carbon. But then this is where the splitting occur. And this is the start of becoming a 3 carbon molecule. Dari yang 6 carbon, now they split jadi dua molecules yang 3 carbon. Satu ialah dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Satu ialah glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Tapi, kenapa lah kita perlu ada step 5 ini? Kenapa kita perlu buatkan DHAP jadi G3P? This is all because of the next step which is step 6, dekat sini, yang dia boleh guna hanya G3P. The next step, substrate yang boleh guna hanya G3P. So, kalau you buang DHAP, I akan hilang separo energy. We can't do that. It's a waste of energy if you just throw this energy away. That's why we will have to convert the DHAP into a form into satu molecule yang boleh guna untuk step 6 and that's G3P. Itulah kenapa dekat step 5 ini kita perlu buatkan DHAP jadi G3P. So now class, yang asal I memang dah ada satu G3P, masa splitting. Step 5, I convert lagi DHAP jadi G3P. So total berapa G3P I akan ada? Two. 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 Good job. So from one molecule of glucose at the end of energy investment phase, I will get two molecules of G3P. Any question? Jelas? Jelas, Miss. Jelas, Miss. Okay, right. So now that's the first part, energy investment phase. Now, all this I already gave you in the notes. Let's look at in energy investment phase dulu. Start from here. This is on page four, slide one. 
ini Miss dah susun semua steps one by one to show you how it occurs. Hopefully, we will make an effort to look at them. It goes sideways again. So one, two, three, and then bawah four, five, six, and then the last row seven, eight, nine. So memang dah susun step itu. Now step one, if you already remember the whole sequence like this, you memang dah boleh ingat apa akan berlaku dekat step one. So glucose to glucose six phosphate. Nama dah ingat phosphate, so dia tambah phosphate yang dari ATP. So phosphorylation. So let's look at this one. Glucose jadi glucose six phosphate. Dia tambah phosphate group. That means dia ada phosphorylation. The glucose gain phosphate group. So it's phosphorylation of glucose. But this phosphate group comes from where? It's from the ATP. So phosphate group from ATP. Okay. And then this process, this step, phosphorylation, kita dah tahu sebab glucose gain phosphate group, dia dah jadi glucose 6 phosphate. And the enzyme involved is hexokinase. Kinase is the name of the enzyme for all sorts of enzymes that transfer phosphate group. Upper upper enzyme yang transfer phosphate group, nama dia kinase. And now because it's 6 and glucose is 6 carbon, so everything 6 hexokinase. You can ingat function dia lah. What is the function of hexokinase? It will transfer a phosphate group from where? From the ATP to the glucose. And what do we, why do we use ATP at this step? The, this ATP is used to increase the energy level of the glucose 6 phosphate. Okay, the what kind energy level in the glucose 6 phosphate? Higher. So, you will tambah in or off. Increase the energy level in glucose 6 phosphate pun boleh. Increase the energy level of glucose 6 phosphate pun boleh. And all this is to make the glucose more reactive. Sebab glucose tu lah yang akan gain the phosphate group to make itself more reactive. I would prefer this sentence more. To increase the energy level in the glucose 6 phosphate. Apparently, dia yang dapat phosphate group, energy level dia lah yang akan jadi banyak. So far, any question? No, me. All right. And then, now, glucose 6, fructose 6, tak tambah apa-apa. It's just isomer. So that's isomerization. Step 3 again, fructose 6 jadi fructose 1, 6. Dia dah tambah phosphate group. So, kalau tambah phosphate group, this step we call it as phosphorylation. Okay, so you cannot think of lah, phosphorylation of what? Phosphorylation, siapa yang dapat? Fructose 6 phosphate yang dapat. So, phosphorylation of Fructose 6 phosphate. Kalau you dah faham untuk step 1, semua ini dia repeat je. Kenapa dia nak tambah ATP? Is to increase the energy level of fructose 1, uh, of fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate ataupun in fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. Untuk buatkan dia lagi, sorry, dekat sini juga. So, untuk buatkan fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate to have more energy. So, increase the energy level of fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. Boleh faham, eh? sebab dalam exam dia akan tanya, why do we need to give the phosphate group? Why do we use ATP in energy investment phase? Dua-dua steps yang guna ATP ini pun untuk buatkan molecule dia lagi reaktif. Buatkan molecule tu, energy level dia increase. Can you understand? Yes, 
Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Okay. Right. So now, this one, mesti ingat enzyme juga, dua-dua steps yang dia guna phosphate group, uh, sorry, yang dia guna ATP ni, you pun kena ingat enzyme yang terlibat. And the step phosphorylation, so phosphor fructokinase. So far, dah guna two ATP. Dekat step one and step three. That's where we use the ATP. Over here, step one, one ATP is used. And then the cut step three, point one ATP is used. And now, enough energy. Tak. Unstable. Dia dah unstable. Kalau dia dah unstable, dia akan start buat apa? Split. Very good. So, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate dah sangat reaktif. The energy level in fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is a lot. That's why it becomes unstable. Kalau dia dah unstable, then dia akan start splitting. And that's how it splits into two molecules yang three carbon. Satu ialah dihydroxyacetone phosphate, satu ialah glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And now, like I mentioned just now, step 5, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, dia dah jadi dua ini. Tapi sebab in the following step, in step 6, I can only use G3P. I tak boleh guna yang molecule lain. So, I mesti buatkan dihydroxyacetone phosphate ini jadi G3P. Barulah I boleh guna energy dalam dia. Tak boleh cakap, oh, molecule ini tak boleh guna, I buang. Tak boleh. So, I need to use the energy in the DHAP. How am I going to use it? I will convert it to G3P. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And after that, at the end of energy investment phase, I will get two molecules of G3P. Any question on energy investment phase? Miss. Hmm? Uh, yang step 5 tu, maksudnya uh, DHAP tu, 3G, eh, G3P tu, dia reversible punya proses ke? Hmm, tapi dia, I mean like isomerization ini dia boleh reverse. It means from this, it can change to G3P. G3P pun boleh change to DHAP. But then, of course, we don't reverse it. It's just that from DHAP, dia dah jadi G3P for the next step. Okay, miss. Wow. Right. Okay. So it just means that they are isomer. They can change from one to another. But the following step, they only use G3P. That's why we must change it from DHAP to G3P. And then only it can proceed to step six. So I will have two G3P. I tak bazil apa-apa energy lah. Yang DHAP tak boleh guna pun tak apa. I dah tukar dia jadi G3P. So energy dalam dia, I pun boleh continue in step six. In the form of G3P. Step one to step five, any question? No, me. No. Make sure you remember the name first. Then only you start remembering the process as well as the enzyme. Memang senang je kalau you kaitkan nama dengan proses dia. And after that, we will use the name to remember the following steps in... Sorry. We'll remember the following steps in energy payoff phase. So sekarang dah boleh bagi balik energy yang dah guna. Tadi energy investment kita dah guna energy. But then now in energy payoff phase we will produce the ATP.
tak guna ATP sudah. Konsep ini sangat-sangat penting ya. Eh? Dah tak guna ATP. Starts from this step. Dia tak guna ATP. But now, what is weird here? Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate jadi 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. Apa beza dua ini? One three bisphosphoglycerate ada apa? Lebih apa? Lebih phosphate. Phosphate. Very good. Lebih phosphate group. But the thing is, phosphate group ini boleh ke dari ATP? This is energy payoff phase. Kita dah buat ATP sudah. So, can I use ATP at this phase? Cannot. No. That means this phosphate group yang extra is not from ATP. Okay? The phosphate group here is just randomly found in the cytosol or the cytoplasm. Glycolysis memang berlaku dalam cytoplasm and dekat cytoplasm dia memang ada phosphate group. So, phosphate group ini yang dalam cytoplasm is not from the ATP will be given to the G3P. Dia bagi dekat glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and then glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dapat phosphate group ini dia akan jadi 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So, what is the name of this step? Dia gain phosphate group. Phosphorylation. Very good. Phosphorylation. Itulah kenapa Miss cakap phosphorylation tak semestinya untuk dia buat ATP ke atau dia guna ATP ke tak. Asalkan dia gain phosphate group, then we call it phosphorylation. If I gain phosphate group, I can say phosphorylation of limb. Boleh. So, gain phosphate group, that's the general name for the process phosphorylation. And this is phosphorylation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate sebab dia dapat phosphate group yang randomly in the cytoplasm. Pastikan you ingat it's not from the ATP sebab ini dah energy pay off phase. Kalau dia dah pay off, tak mungkin lah dia guna ATP lagi. No. This is the time when they want to produce ATP, then they will not use any ATP. And that's why this is just the phosphate group from the cytoplasm. Other than that, we also have one step called oxidation. Untuk step 6 ini, kena ingat tempat ni lah yang ada oxidation. And now, let's look at your page 4 again, step 6. So when you look at step 6, you can see that we only use G3P, okay? Inilah kenapa tadi step 5, I kena tukar DHAP jadi G3P. So semua ini ada dua molecules sudah. Two molecules of G3P. And now, phosphorylation part itu kita dah belajar. So step ini kita panggil oxidation and phosphorylation. And like I told you, or you can just write in your notes, other phosphate group, tapi phosphate group ini not from ATP, but from cytosol or cytoplasm. So you can remember this. I memang dah letak dekat sini, tapi kalau you nak tulis lagi dalam gambar pun boleh. And now, there are the oxidation. Oxidation dekat chapter ini sangat penting. You kena ingat ada oxidizing agent, reducing agent, NADH, NAD plus semua ni. So you come across this two when we learn cofactors. Masa kita belajar cofactor, kita ada belajar coenzyme if you remember it. And coenzyme salah satu contoh ialah NAD plus atau NADP plus atau NADH, semua ini ialah coenzyme. And oxidizing agent. Let's talk about oxidation. 
I tak tahu your concept on oxidation. Is it good or bad? But let's just look at it. Oxidation. Kalau NAD plus dia tambah hydrogen tambah electron it gains hydrogen and electron and now it become NADH okay I balance the equation I will get NADH plus H plus that's the whole equation kadang-kadang dia akan suruh you bagi ya dalam exam so now you have to remember from gaining this process is NAD plus gain so maksudnya NAD plus ini dah undergo reduction very good reduction sebab kita cakap oil rig oil rig ayah Kalau reduction, they gain. Kalau oxidation, they lost. Lost what? Lost hydrogen, lost electron. Kalau gain, they gain hydrogen, gain electron. So dekat sini, you boleh nampak NAD plus ini dia gain. Dia gain hydrogen, gain electron. That's why it is reduction. So NAD plus, dia dah reduce to become NAD H. Are you okay? Yes. Yeah. So NAD plus is reduced to NADH. NADH inila reducing agent. Why do we call it a reducing agent? Sebab dia ada H. Yang ada H lebih tu, dia boleh bagi molecules lain. It can give away its H. It can make other molecules to reduce. That's why we call it a reducing agent. Agent ialah orang yang boleh buatkan orang lain. So in this case, reducing agent, it means NADH. I can give away the H. Okay, H ini I boleh I boleh bagi another molecule. Let's say molecule P. Molecule P ini boleh dapat H from NADH. That means molecule P ini akan jadi reduce sebab dia gain hydrogen. NADH buatkan molecule P reduce. That's why we say NADH is a reducing agent. That's the meaning of reducing agent. You Agent yang buatkan orang reduce. That's why reducing agent. If NADH ialah reducing agent, NAD plus will be? Oxidizing agent. So NADH is reducing agent and then NAD plus will be oxidizing agent. I don't know how well you understand redox reaction in chemistry, but in this chapter, you must remember which one is reducing agent, which one is oxidizing agent. You must be in that and then NAD plus reduce to form NADH. Inila process reduction. NAD plus gain hydrogen and electron. Maksudnya NAD plus reduce to NADH. Ataupun you boleh ingat lah, oh dia pun dah reduce, mestilah dia lah reducing agent. Okay, so now, ini ialah NAD plus. What about the case of FAD? Now you have to tell me that which one is the reducing agent, which one is the oxidizing agent. I not the lucky and jawab eh? except Jordan. F A D now become F A D H two. 
Right, FAD nak jadi FADH2, reduction ke oxidation? Reduction. Reduction. Very good. Reduction is the same thing like NAD plus tadi, dia dah tambah hydrogen, tambah electron. Sebab dia dah tambah hydrogen, tambah electron, it gains. So, kalau gains, itu ialah reduction. So, FAD gain hydrogen and electron, it means FAD is reduced to FADH2. So, FADH2, what can you say? Is it a reducing agent or an oxidizing agent? Oxidizing agent. Reducing agent. <laughs> ah, reducing, reducing. <laughs> FADH2, class siapa-siapa yang ada H ini mesti ialah reducing agent. Ingat macam ni je. Kenapa? Kalau dia ada H, barulah dia boleh give away the H to make another molecule become reduced. Kita namakan dia reducing agent. It means that dia boleh buatkan benda lain reduce. Kalau dia ada H, barulah dia boleh buatkan benda lain reduce sebab benda lain akan take away the H from this reducing agent. So, dia akan jadi reduce because of this agent. So, we call this agent a reducing agent. Kalau yang tak ada H, what is the ability to gain H or to give away H? Gain. Gain. gain kan? Dia punya ability ialah dapat hydrogen dari benda lain. So, let's say molecule ini. Molecule ini boleh give away the H untuk bagi dia. So, molecule ini kalau lose, kalau dia lose hydrogen, what is the process? Oxidation. Oxidation. Very good. Oxidation. FAD dia boleh buatkan molecule tu oxidation. Dia boleh buatkan molecule ini lose hydrogen. That means dia ialah agent yang buatkan benda lain oxidize. So FAD is the oxidizing agent. Inilah maksud oxidizing agent. It means that I ialah benda yang boleh buatkan I ialah agent yang buatkan benda lain oxidize. It means I must have the ability to take away their hydrogen. Sebab kalau agent ini take away the hydrogen, it will make benda ini jadi oxidize. So it is an oxidizing agent. So oxidizing agent will undergo reduction. Reducing agent will undergo oxidation. That's the concept in chemistry that you learn in high school. Again, I don't know how well you remember it or you understand this concept, but now I hope you remember one thing. Other H in mustiella reducing agent. Always remember the other H baru dia boleh give away the H and make other people gain. Okay, make other molecules gain the hydrogen. So, dia ialah ben agent yang buatkan molekul lain reduce. So, it is a reducing agent. Throughout the whole chapter, if in the exam they ask you what is the role of FADH2, it is a reducing agent. What is the role of NADH? It is a reducing agent. Inilah peranan dia dalam cellular respiration. Boleh. Can I in that equation? Eh? Okay. And now come back to step six. Yang Miss Ajatadi. 
Kenapa I letak star semua ni? Sebab dia pernah keluar dalam exam. Semua ini. Dia suruh you explain this step. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dia dah oxidize. Okay. Oxidize maksudnya dia lose ke dia gain hydrogen. Okay. So, Lose ke gain? Lose. Oxidation, lose hydrogen and electron. Hmm. So now, they lose hydrogen to where? They lose hydrogen to, to NAD+. Plus. So NAD+, plus akan dapat hydrogen. So it means that NAD+, plus ini akan undergo reduction very good so NAD plus pula akan undergo reduction that's why student dah misunderstood ada your student ingat oh oxidation ini refer to the NAD plus no oxidation is referred to G3P G3P ini yang akan oxidize. G3P ini yang akan hilang hydrogen. Hilang hydrogen. So, mesti siapa-siapa kena ambil hydrogen tu. That's the NAD+. So, the NAD+, will gain the hydrogen from the G3P. And that's how it become NADH. Inilah redox reaction. Satu yang lose, satu yang gain. And that's how, that's how it became the NADH. And NADH is a reduced NAD+. Mestilah. NAD+, reduced jadi NADH. So NADH ialah reduced form of NAD+. And it is a reducing agent. I hope you please remember this and revise this part again and again if your redox concept is very bad. Please do your revision. Sebab bahagian ini bukan hanya dalam biology but also in chemistry. So please, please make an effort to understand this. And that's oxidation. I hope you don't need me to repeat. But if you want me to write it out again, oxidation. So from G3P, dia hilang hydrogen. Okay, dia hilang hydrogen. Hydrogen ini dia bagi dekat NAD+. So NAD+, inilah yang akan dapat hydrogen. So dia hilang hydrogen, maksudnya dia undergo Oxidation. Oxidation. Whereas NAD plus akan gain the hydrogen. So, dia akan undergo reduction. 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 Good job. And that's why we say NAD plus is reduced to NADH. Inilah kenapa kita cakap NADH is the reduced form of NAD+. It means that dia form lepas the reduced NAD+, reduced. So, bentuk NADH ialah the reduced format of NAD+. And also, it is a reducing agent. Ini je yang you kena ingat dekat step 6. There are the oxidation of G3P. Oxidation of G3P, G3P dah hilangkan hydrogen dia. Dah hilang hydrogen, siapa yang dapat? NAD plus yang dapat. So NAD plus tu dah reduce sebab dia gain hydrogen. So dia reduce jadi NADH. And NADH is a reducing agent. Is that enough? On step six. Yes, miss. So oxidation, I'm sorry, oxidation of G3P as well as the gain phosphate group from the cytosol 
So oxidation and phosphorylation of G3P and now dia dah jadi 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric. And let's look at the next step. 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric over here. Nanti dia akan jadi 3-phosphoglyceric. Apa yang dah hilang? One three jadi three. One phosphate. One phosphate group. Right. Step ini, phase ini ialah energy pay off. It produces ATP. So based on your understanding, this is the phase that we will produce ATP. So maksudnya, dia hilang phosphate group. Phosphate group tu dah pergi mana? Bagi apa? ADP. Very good. ADP. Phosphate group dari 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate ini dah bagi dekat ADP untuk form? ATP. Good job. This is where we form ATP. And you learn on Thursday, ada dua cara untuk form ATP. Satu ialah substrate level. Satu ialah oxidative. What do you think? Step ini ada level. tak? <laughs> Baru nak tanya, ada tak involve redox? Ada tak involve redox reaction? Ada. Ha? Step ini. Ada. Tak ada. Tak ada. Oh. Tak ada. Step ini tak involve redox. Dia hanya terus bagi phosphate group dekat ADP. The phosphate group from the 1,3-bisphosphoglyceride directly give it to ADP. That's why this step yang produce ATP is what we call substrate level phosphorylation. Sebab dia tak melibatkan Redox untuk produce ATP. Dia terus bagi phosphate group dekat ADP untuk buat ATP. Proses untuk buat ATP dua je. Substrate level atau oxidative. So dekat sini kalau dia terus bagi phosphate group, terus buat ATP yang tak melibatkan redox, then this is substrate level phosphorylation. And 3-phosphoglycerate jadi 2-phosphoglycerate pun tak ada apa-apa perubahan. And then 2-phosphoglycerate jadi phosphoenopyruvate pun macam tak ada apa-apa perubahan. Dua steps ini you boleh baca gitu-gitu je lah. Dia macam tak penting sangat. But now, phosphoenopyruvate jadi pyruvate. Apa beza dua ini? Phosphoenopyruvate dengan pyruvate. Pyruvate tak ada apa. Very good. Pyruvate dah tak ada phosphate group. Maksudnya phosphoenol pyruvate ini dah hilang phosphate group dia. So phosphate group dia dah pergi mana? From ATP. Hilang phosphate group. Phosphate group yang hilang ini dah bagi dekat ADP untuk form ATP. And again, what is this step? Oxidative ke substrate level? Substrate level. Substrate level. You can see how direct it is to occur. Kalau you nampak terus je, dia give away the phosphate group, terus buat ATP, sangat straightforward, this must be substrate level. Dia tak banyak uh, kena reduce elektron dulu, hydrogen dulu atau gain dulu uh, baru dia dapat. Itu memang leceh. Substrate level, very straightforward. Oh, I give away the phosphate group to ADP, I terus buat ATP. Tu je. Substrate level, phosphorylation. And that's how we produce two ATP from one G3P. From one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, I dah dapat two ATP. But now, class, tadi kita cakap satu glucose until step 5, I ada berapa G3P? 
2. So semua benda ini you kena times 2. It means that I have 2 G3P, I have 2 molecule of 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, I have 2 molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate, I have 2 molecules of 2 phosphoglycerate, and I have 2 of there and 2 of this. Semua ini sepatutnya times 2 because my G3P at step 5 dah jadi 2. So maksudnya ATP I pun kena times 2. So how many ATP produce here? 4. Four. So yang produce ATP ialah 4. Yang guna? Atas guna 2. Hmm. Atas guna dua. Bawah so produce dua. four. Good job. Baki. Okay. So if we say the net ATP. Baki dia. Let me change the color first. So. Kalau dia tanya net ATP. It means baki ATP yang tinggal berapa. It will be two net ATP. Are you clear? Clear me. Mm -hmm. Clear me. Okay. Right. So let's look at substrate level phosphorylation step itu. So you boleh nampak, like I told you just now, from dual phosphate group jadi satu phosphate group, mesti dia dah hilang. Hilang phosphate group pergi mana? Dia dah bagi dekat ADP phosphate group itu. So ADP terus dapat phosphate group dari 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. So one phosphate group from 1,3 transferred to ADP. So ADP terus dapat phosphate group terus jadi ATP. So ATP is formed. And this way transfer phosphate group terus bagi ADP is what we call substrate level phosphorylation. So two molecules, I get two ATP. And then step eight, just rearrangement from three phosphor, jadi two phosphor glycerate, so isomer. And then any molecule of water is removed to rearrange the atoms, and now it becomes phosphor enol pyruvate PEP. It is unstable, and the last step, this is on page 5, slide 1. Last step ini dari phosphor jadi pyruvate mesti nampak dia dah hilang phosphate group. Again, kalau energy pay off whenever other phosphate group hilang, mesti sebab dia nak buat ATP. So hilang phosphate group dia, ADP dapat phosphate group ini, dia akan jadi ATP. So again, another ATP is formed two molecules and two molecules of ATP and two molecules of pyruvate are formed. Since this step occurs twice, I should write four molecules, bukan two. Four molecules of, oh this step, betul lah. So this step occurs twice, so I add the two molecules of ATP. So but I add the dual G3P. So two molecules of ATP, I get two molecules of pyruvate too. And that's how, at the end of it, uses two ATP semasa energy investment phase. Semasa energy payoff, dia produces four ATP. Baki. Kalau siapa-siapa tak faham apa tu net, tulis dekat nota. Baki, the remaining. The remaining ATP that I got is two. Sebab sini guna dua, sini produce empat. So 4 minus 2, I will get 2 net ATP. Ini sangat penting, selalu tanya dalam exam. And what else do you need to know? Like I told you, NAD plus ialah core enzyme yang tak ada H, no H, so oxidizing agent. Ingat macam tu lah, zero, so no H. So oxidizing agent. Kalau you rasa susah nak ingat. And I'm, I hope you can understand the concept. 
And then your other age, in ELR reducing agent. They reduce coenzyme, sebab dia ialah reduce NAD+. And that's how it is a reducing agent. We are done for glycolysis. Any question? No, miss. No, miss. Five minutes, then we will come back to this again. Okay? Five minutes break, and then we'll come back to the next part. <laughs> 